Hello, I'm Ruth Werner, and this is my audiovisual sidebar talking with and about long haulers to go along with my feature article, What You Need to Know About Long COVID, Unpacking the Long Haul, in the January-February 2022 issue of Massage and Bodywork magazine. Obviously, I have been tracking COVID-19 since we first became aware of it. I first spoke about it in a public health issues class that I taught at the beginning of February 2020. Little did we know at that time what was about to happen. Four months later, in June of 2020, before we knew that long COVID was even a thing, I published a list of screening questions for clients who we know are survivors of COVID-19. At that time, my focus was on both protecting the massage therapist from any risk of infection and on protecting the client from any risk of adverse reactions that they might experience related to receiving massage. The list included these items. What does your medical doctor say about your risk of communicability? What does your medical doctor advise about getting physical activity? What do you do in terms of physical activity? Do you have any new, that is, since your infection, skin marks, lesions, or rashes, especially on the toes, but really anywhere on the body? Do you have any new, that is, since your infection, experience of severe deep muscle or joint pain unrelated to recent physical activity? Do you have any new, that is, since your infection, discomfort with exertion? Are you taking any drugs to manage blood clotting? And what other long-term consequences of your infection affect your life? I stand by these questions, but I have altered them with some slightly different points of focus. And you can find this new list of questions and their rationales for clients with long COVID in the article in the magazine. For our clients who we know are living with the consequences of long COVID, a couple of these questions are more important than they used to be. Because COVID-19 survivors may be at risk for clotting disorders, it is important that we have a very clear idea about the health of their cardiovascular system and their cardiopulmonary system. Any people who are hospitalized with COVID may have been put on long-term, that is six months or more, prescriptions of anticoagulant drugs. And this, of course, is a sign that blood clotting is a possible issue. But it should also make us curious about what kinds of side effects they're experiencing in relation to their anticoagulant use, since, as we know, some people have very few side effects, but others find that they bruise really easily, and this requires accommodation on the part of their massage therapist. We cannot design a session that stays within our client's capacity for adaptation, that is their allostatic load, without having a clear idea of their activities of daily living. Asking our client, do you exercise daily, is not completely adequate because our idea of exercise and their idea of exercise may be completely different. When our client tells us that they take a walk three or four times a week, well, that can sound great, right? Hopeful and energetic. And for the person who's walking energetically, that's true. But for the person who struggles to make it to the mailbox and back and calls that exercise because it is a huge physical drain for them, that gives us a really different picture. And that has to inform the way we envision and execute our work. Lastly, I think this is a situation where more than most times, it is especially helpful to have a good line of communication with our client's healthcare team. People who read what I write and attend classes with me and listen to my podcasts will be familiar with my attitudes about the concept of the value of a doctor's note. No doctor knows what you do. No doctor can take responsibility for your clinical decisions. But our clients who are living with long COVID may have complex and difficult to treat medical situations, and we can improve our service to these clients by coordinating our work with their healthcare team. Please note that coordinating our work is not the same as asking permission. And this is a point that I make strenuously and often. As I continue to beat this drum and shout from this soapbox, maybe to the point of being annoying about it, I think it might help to outline what a functional interaction with a healthcare team could look like. So here's one example. 
And this is a conversation that could be held in person or by telephone or via email, what, however it works out best. <clears throat> you ready? Hello, Dr. Martinez. My name is Ruth and your patient, Mrs. Lee, gave me permission to contact you. I am her massage therapist. And Mrs. Lee tells me that she's really suffering with long COVID and she wants to receive massage because she thinks it will make her feel better. And I just want to make sure that that's okay with you and to see if you have any special concerns or if you have any special ideas about things that I should be doing. Right? Okay. Hold on to that. And here's another example. Hello, Dr. Martinez. My name is Ruth and your patient, Mrs. Lee, gave me permission to contact you. I'm her massage therapist. What I understand from Mrs. Lee is that she contracted COVID-19 six months ago, and now she's dealing with some paresthesia in her feet and she gets severe headaches. And of course, she's really fatigued and feels mentally foggy a lot. And she has some shortness of breath. And she's hoping that with massages, her numbness and tingling and shooting pains might calm down some and maybe her headaches could improve. Those are the things that she really wants me to work on. The work I do is usually light to medium pressure. And for Mrs. Lee, I want to put special focus on the sensation in her legs and her feet. And I also want to see what I can do for her headaches. And that might involve some more medium to deeper pressure massage to her neck and her shoulders with maybe some mobilization of her neck. My sessions run about 50 minutes of hands-on work. And Mrs. Lee wants to see me about once a week or maybe every two weeks, depending on how things go for her. I always take detailed notes about what happens in each session so I can see how my clients progress. My understanding is that Mrs. Lee is taking some medication to manage her nerve pain. So I won't be giving any pressure that might be irritating. But to my knowledge, she's not using any other medications to manage her long COVID symptoms. And I just wanted to check in to make sure that that's correct. I also wanted to see if you have found whether Mrs. Lee has any other long COVID complications that might interfere in her normal daily activities, like if she has any blood clotting or heart damage or lung damage. She didn't report these to me, but I thought it would be good to check with you too. I just wanted to let you know about my plans and to see if you have any special concerns about how I've described this to you. I want my work to support your goals and to not interfere with any treatments that you're doing for Mrs. Lee. And if you would like any updates about how things go, I'll be happy to share them as long as Mrs. Lee continues to give me permission. So do you have any questions for me? Okay. <clears throat> so which of these conversations is going to give us more information to get us to a place where we can provide safe and effective massage for Mrs. Lee? What I'm hoping you heard there is that in the first conversation, the massage therapist was asking for permission and for guidance. And as I keep saying, that's not only not the doctor's job, it's really not fair to make a doctor responsible for our choices. The doctor's job is to help the patient, not the massage therapist. In the second conversation, and there was a lot in there, so I want to make sure you understand it's so cool. It's totally cool to script these out or to put them into emails so that we can be really clear about the massage therapist's purpose for contacting the doctor. In this conversation, the therapist was trying to be sure that the massage treatment plan was in alignment with the rest of Mrs. Lee's care and that that door was open for further communication. And they had very specific questions about her complications and the meds she was taking. So the elements that make this kind of conversation work are pretty consistent. They include these things, that the client gives permission, that the client's goals for massage are stated and your plans for how to move toward those goals are clearly described. You give a good description of the work you plan to do. There's a list of specific concerns regarding health or medications or other things. And there's an invitation for more communication. Now, truthfully, most of the time, doctors assume that massage is safe because most of the time, it is. So they won't be thinking about specific risks unless we bring concerns to their attention. And I can't tell you how many times 
that this gets missed. I have had, I have heard about clients with DVT who had a doctor's note or clients with newly transplanted organs or clients in end stage renal failure. And I don't know if there really was a doctor's note or if the client just said there was because they really wanted a massage. But a lot of times a doctor's attitude is, well, if you want a massage and you think that'll help, yeah, go ahead. Why not? And that means it is our responsibility to determine safety parameters, which is as it should be. Occasionally, we might encounter a doctor who thinks that massage is a terrible idea, and that gives us an opportunity to find out why and maybe learn some important things. Also, it gives us an opportunity to educate that doctor about the nature of our work. In any case, when we have clients who are under a doctor's care and they have complicated conditions with a lot of risks, it's just a great idea to invite ourselves onto that healthcare team. But let's do that in a really professional, thought out and client-centered way. Thank you.